problem was how does Micro Machine Works get more people to apply for work at Micro Machine Works? And that was that was really their problem. And um, my my concern, kind of like what you were saying, is like when's the time? Right. You know, how am I still going to teach what I need to teach? So I really needed to make sure that if we're doing this, how can I connect it to English language arts? You know, because I'm I'm an ELA teacher. I can't just you know do whatever I want. I got I got standards I got to teach. Right. So we really connected it to that writing piece of ELA. Every kid they wrote research papers defending their positions and why their solution was the most efficient. Um, and then they created presentations and presented it to Lynn. So we come up with the idea of we will bring 15, 15, 16 students mm -hmm. to our facility, and they were there for a half a day mm -hmm. at least. Yeah. And they interviewed all the employees that worked there. <coughs> they got a little, well, they got a lot of overview about what manufacturing looks like, how to make parts, how to do the CAD, the CAM, CNC, the robotic machines, and everything like that. But then after these kids had spent half a day there interviewing and take pictures all you want, take videos, ask any questions you want to employees, it was their task to go back to Shenandoah and report what they had seen to the other 75 classmates. And they obviously did an excellent job reporting back to their classmates because I think we come up and we initially had a talk at Shenandoah and a little presentation there, and I think we had chocolate bars we made and some 3D printed stuff, and you know, the power is your imagination. Kids, this is, if you can dream it, you can make it. And that was kind of the message sort of thing. Uh, and then we met again to review where they were at. Uh, I think we spent the whole day there that day uh, because three different classes yes. with six teams in each class, five or six yes, teams 16. in each class, and each one of these teams presented their solutions. So they had to work together. God, they made PowerPoint presentations, they did songs, jingles, they made merchandise, they made laser engraved signs. It's like, wow. They even put us an Instagram account out there, yes. I think, sort of. And thing. wrote very detailed research papers about why they were the best. And, yeah, exactly you know, right. supported that with evidence. If there's any ELA people in here, you know, being able to make a claim and support it with evidence is a big deal, especially at the eighth grade level. So. But really, what's amazing is this is a language arts class, and they're learning about manufacturing accidentally through their language arts class. But in that language arts class, they're also learning about getting up and making presentations before a group. They're learning about writing. They're learning about taking down research. They're we're looking at how do we do teamwork to interface with our team to transfer that, that wisdom that we learned on tour sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, it was a really eye-opening experience for me. Um, I taught at Franklin Local Community School, um, which I'll give you my spiel about the community, that title at some other point, but we are not a community school, it's in our title, but we still are, act a little bit like a community school population. So. Um, let's just say my students weren't, weren't, weren't always successful in the traditional classroom. The real world problem solving scenario was the biggest change and engagement that I saw in my students all three years I taught there, hands down. Um, and I use it all the time and, and I, I, I wish I would have discovered this earlier in my teaching career, I would have been a better teacher. But all the problems that I thought I had in my classroom, attendance problems, behavior problems, were not really really any of those things. They were all engagement problems. This pro this um, scenario flipped that for them. So even my my group of boys who sat in the back of the classroom were like, well, "This is stupid. I don't care if they can hire someone or not." <coughs> my group of boys went down to the t-shirt printer, designed a new t-shirt that they were going to take to their school visits that um, in order to solve their scenario. And so I saw this switch. Um, and I'll say that, so my original thought was to do it for a week, and we were, we were gonna do it intensely for a week, and it was gonna be, they came in, the, our, my partner came in on Monday, they were going to address the, or give them the scenario. On Wednesday, I was gonna do a check-in day with them, and on Friday, they were coming back to pitch their, their answers to them. On Thursday, well, on Wednesday, I was texting my boss, my principal at the time, this is awful, I don't have any, I'm not gonna have any products, no one's gonna get a solution that's workable. 
and she's like, I'm gonna come up there and I'm gonna I'm gonna get on them. And then I was like, let's just give it five more minutes. Let's just see. And then I started hearing like, but well, what about this? Well, what about that? And so I end up calling my business partner and saying, I need more time. Like the kids are coming to me. They're like, hey, we need more time. We have, we have an idea, but I, I can't get it done by Friday. And so if I would have asked them to do that on a Punnett Square, it never would have happened, right? It never would have happened. And I love Punnett Squares, and I can teach them really well, I think. But it never would have happened. They never would ask me for more time to solve the Punnett Square. But they were interested in finding out more, to, uh, to have more time to solve this scenario because it was real to them. The boys who sat in the back of the classroom who didn't think that they had anything that they cared about with Cedar Ridge Behavioral Health realize that Cedar Ridge Behavioral Health also employs maintenance people every day, and they have jobs every day. And my boys who sat in the back of the room could go work there and fix you know, the mowers that they were using to mow all their properties and all this stuff. They, it, it, was, it became applicable to them. So um, that, was my, that would be my teacher version. My administrative version is like, I get to watch this, right? This is what happens when you have a teacher and a community partner and they're engaged and this is the work that's happening. Uh, Jordan is awesome for our district and working with our teachers. Our teachers are excited about, um, about this program. Um, our middle school is super excited, middle school and elementary are super excited about getting more engaged in this work. Um, and as an administrator, I say, this is the work. This is where we get from status quo to something else. And so I'm um, super excited about, about that project. Thank you, Karen. Christy Catalytics is a company in Crooksville. Um, I'm born and raised there, and I had no idea what the big, they have a big giant red and white tent. It looks almost like the circus is in town. Uh, no idea what that was. The kids had no idea what it was. Uh, Mr. Sparks came in and, you know, was fortunate he had two students, uh, or two kids that were former students of mine, so that made a great partnership. And uh, they make clay, little clay balls that they send out all over the world. Uh, the company's based out of St. Louis, and then they use those clay balls in refineries. Um, like I say, nationwide, worldwide. So for our kids in you know, little old Crooksville of 2,000 people to realize they have a worldwide impact right there uh, was huge. Uh, the kids had a $5,000 budget and they had to come up with some sort of exterior project uh, to the building to make it more welcoming, more inviting. Uh, so the kids, they present a lot of things and then the connections that they made, the ideas they came up with, uh, like one of them was they wanted to have a big sign uh, like the digital signs that you put out front of your school. We had just put one out. Kids were like, you know, like sign out by the highway. So that opened up. Then we said, you know, we called our curriculum director and that group of kids ended up in front of the curriculum director who they had no idea who she was. And then in front of the high school principal who they had no idea who he was. And then on a daily basis, they're making a, company, a call to Kessler Sign Company in Zanesville. Um, so it was just, it was fun to see the connections they were making. So, uh, but they came up with some really good ideas and Chris actually got back to me and he said, yeah, many of their ideas being implemented. We're currently pouring concrete outside the office and factory. We're building a covered area outside with picnic tables, barbecue grill, and they're getting ready to paint the warehouse, which is a lot of them were saying that. PCC Airfoils make uh, jet engine parts. So if you've been on a jet engine, you've probably been uh, on you know a jet that has pieces that were made in Crooksville. And they introduced that to the kids, so get the kids familiar with the company, and they introduced their problems that they're actually dealing with. Um, so they have a like a sandblast uh, cabinets that they use metal shot in them. And they're they're running, they're going through gloves like crazy, and they come up with this, I don't know, it's pushing thirty thousand dollars a year they're spending on gloves. So they're all right guys, we're trying to find a way First, safety and economics. What can we do to save some money with this project and let the kids go? Well, we're supposed to be hands off with this. The students are put in a certain group, uh, four, five, five of the max, I believe it was, and they're supposed to come up with a solution. And it's so hard not to say, well, you know, <laughs> but, but let them roll with it. And this was a semester project. We, we pick a day a week uh, or so. Uh, to let you guys work on this and then at the end of the semester 
know, they came back, like Adam said, and they did the presentations back to the, the, the folks from PCC. Um, so it was really awesome to see, you know, where these kids came from and, and what they did with this. And, you know, you had to be hands off. You had to let these guys do what they did. And they had to realize they're 13, 14 years old. Yeah. Uh, but they they loved it. Um, that they they really enjoyed it. And uh, a couple of quotes then uh, from Shelley, the the gal who was the human who's human resources. He said uh, she feels. Uh, feels it is was very beneficial program for us and the kids so they got as much out of it as the kids did connecting with these guys and they said they would love to continue the program again uh, Trevor he said I wish I could have been involved with this as a student himself he said uh, using the students ideas they came up with so we haven't set anything in place yet we're looking at the same ideas replacing gloves with a better quality glove but we're also looking at the automation ideas. So their thoughts, their solutions are right at the track with what the kids are thinking. So, you know, that, that's rewarding. Uh, very, very rewarding. But uh, seeing the kids, like you said, the ownership, take, taking pride in that, and they were so excited to work on this stuff. That's, that, that, I mean, that's place-based, you know, and, and it's, it's, it's huge, it's, it's awesome. Great activity. Awesome. Awesome. I think one of the big takeaways from this is society is changing. Knowledge is changing. And we don't have to memorize tables like we used to. It's all out there. We have AI. Don't be scared of it. Embrace it. And figure out how to use it responsibly. Use your tools. But technology changes so rapidly. We don't need to learn the technology. We need to learn how to understand the technology and implement it. And that's where the real world problem solving comes into it. 